Black Saturday bushfires of 2009 shocked Australia and the world and led to an outpouring of sympathy and support for the many, many victims. But for those caught in the middle of the disaster, its impact continues to be felt today. That's according to a new long-term study. The lead author of the report Beyond Bushfires is Associate Professor Lisa Gibbs from the University of Melbourne. And she joins us along with King Lake resident and police officer Jason Gaffey. Lisa, Jason, good morning and welcome to News Breakfast. Good morning, morning. thank you. Tell us about the focus of the report. You had, I think, a thousand participants in this. We did. And look, most of the disaster research tends to focus on the short period just after a disaster. What we wanted to look at was a bit further down the track, three to five years. How are people getting by? And how are they getting by? Well, first of all, I'm just always astounded by how remarkable people are in coping with incredibly traumatic circumstances. But what we found was that there's still a significant minority five years later who are showing signs of mental health disorders. Jason, what's the experience been like for you in the... I mean, the, the event itself was traumatic enough. The aftermath? I guess the, the biggest thing for me in the aftermath was um, the breakdown of the community um, and some of those social infrastructures that were there to help children and families cope. You know, when you, when you lose a school or a preschool mm. centre or, or, for example, a cricket club stops functioning um, as effectively as it has been, that breakdown of those social structures really does impact long term. What's been the impact personally? I believe you've got two boys. Yeah, I've, they're, they're teenage boys yeah. now. And, um, but how, how, how have they dealt with the, the years after the disaster since 2009? Uh, well, we're very good as a family and we, and we talked about it very early on. I'm lucky through my experiences through my employment with Victoria Police mm. to know how to deal with grief, yep. um, how to deal with trauma and that held me in good stead to be able to focus on my boys and my wife um, and not really worry about myself because I could process what had happened reasonably quickly. Mm -hmm. Lisa, what were the key findings for you? Well, um, certainly there was some I absolutely support what Jason's saying in terms of the impact on children and often people didn't um, think about services for very young children because they kind of hoped that they'd forget about it. Yes. Um, but what we found was that those, those impacts were apparent. Uh, on a broader scale, we found that the social connections were a huge factor in terms of how people recovered further down the track. The, the, having close personal ties is really important, but also being part of local community groups. Now, we know a lot of measures have been put in place, uh, at least since the, the bushfire, in terms of physical safety, uh, mm. hoping to stop a, a repeat of this disaster. What recommendations are you making to, uh, as Jason was saying, build up that community coherence? We were working with state government very closely and other agencies like Australian Red Cross and Emergency Management Victoria to think about both ends of the disaster context, certainly in terms of recovery, what can, what can support recovery processes, but also thinking about building that resilience in advance whether that be about encouraging engagement in, in local community groups and also thinking about resilience building programs for students in schools. Jason, I'm looking through some of the recommendations here uh, following this report. Consider mental health planning, plan ahead for how to find each other, be kind to yourself and others. But then there's this one, be open to the possibility of positives. Is that a difficult headspace to get yourself into when you've been through something so relentlessly negative? Oh, it most definitely is. And, you know, this is one of the biggest disasters in Australian history and mm. it's one of the most traumatic events that a person could ever go through. So how do you do that? When you've been through something so negative, how do you suddenly throw the switch to being open to positives? Because of course it is the positives really only that'll get you through. Yeah, it is. And, it, and it's about having a strong family unit. Um, and, and I genuinely believe that if as a community we heal the kids, then the kids will heal the family and the family will heal the community. And that's certainly the focus that we've taken um, in terms of the charity that I'm involved with. And Lisa, after all they've been through, are the communities receptive? to what you're offering here? Uh, the communities have been extraordinary. When we do our research, we try very hard to do it in partnership. We, we have a local presence. We talk to people about what's happened, how we should do the research. And so as a result, they've been part of it all the way. And, and I, you know, the feedback I'm getting is that this reflects their experiences and that's really important. You mentioned resilience in passing there. Is it possible though, and this is a buzzword that every parent watching this morning will have to deal with and be dealing with in their schools at the moment, it's all about resilience. Is it possible that we've actually overestimated the natural resilience of children? Because we do say that. They're resilient, they'll bounce back, mm. they'll forget 
uh, you know, they're just young. Have we overestimated that? Look, I think the, what we've done is perhaps underestimated the, the ongoing disruptions that occur after a disaster. There, everybody has a natural level of resilience, yes. but it gets undermined when it gets you know, when there's ongoing demands. When there's too much change. Yep, so mm. you might cope with the original trauma event, but then there's a, a change of accommodation, impact on relationships, change of income, and that starts to bring people down. Jason, just quickly and finally, do you feel like you're, you're getting through the dark times? You've got past them? Yeah, I think, as, a, as I speak for King Lake community, I think we are moving forward. And I think, um, you know, the vast majority of the residents now um, are prepared for what could possibly come in the future. Lisa, Jason, great to have you on the program. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.